Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy, and in this bag I've got myself an assortment of goodies related to 3D printing that I think is going to be useful when it comes to maintenance and just the hobby in general, the basic things that you will encounter from time to time. And everything inside of this bag I got from Timu. Why Timu? Because Timu is cheap. So I'm gonna dig my hand in there, pull out all of these accessories one by one. I'm also gonna let you know what the price is for these particular things. And if you're interested in any of them, I'll have links to all of them down in the description. And even though I do make a lot of videos about the Flash Forge Adventure 5M, you don't need to have that particular 3D printer in order to enjoy the things in this bag. These are going to work for any 3D printer. All right, so first up, I like the whole blind bag approach, so I'm just gonna grab stuff at random. All right, so this is 40 sheets of sandpaper of various grits. And according to Timu here, I paid $5.29. These are 40 pieces of sandpaper with grits that go from 120 to 3,000 grits. So it looks like it's in order too. So the 120 looks fairly rough there on the surface all the way down to 3,000, which is gonna be at the bottom, which is pretty smooth. I mean, look at that, very, very smooth. So if you're just trying to get yourself a better finish on your 3D prints, maybe, you know, one, one edge or something came out looking a little bit too rough and you just wanna smooth it down, you've got a good assortment of sandpaper grits here that are surely to help you out in that regard. And getting 40 pieces of these for a little bit over $5, hey, that's not, that's not bad. Next one is going to be, what is this? I actually don't know what this is. I don't remember what I bought. Let's open it up and see. All right, so it's wrapped in styrofoam. What is this? Oh, now I remember. These are magnets. Now these are a specific size of, size of magnets. These are seven by two millimeter magnets. And these were a dollar and 49 cents for these 20 pieces. And the reason why I got this is because recently I printed myself a Spider-Man 2099 helmet, a really popular model that you can find for free on printables. And the great thing about that is it has a back plate that you can attach with magnets. And they already have the indentations on the helmet where you can put these magnets. And it does the same thing for the, the face visor plate things. So I got myself 20 magnets. Actually, I should have gotten more, but I'm going to put these on the helmet and uh, see what happens with that. But these magnets can also be really helpful for other things that you 3D print, such as refrigerator magnets. I actually have some Mario inspired uh, 3D prints that have magnet inserts on the back that I now have on my fridge. And then I also have something for the dishwasher that says whether or not the dishes in there are clean or dirty, they are magnetized as well. I used magnets and I glued those on the back. So magnets are always good good to have. Let me keep them away from my phone though. And I'm just going to tuck these over here where there's nothing metal. So yeah, magnets good to have. What's next on this list? Ah, oh, all right. So this is a deburring tool and this deburring tool costs $4 and 49 cents. It's an 11 piece set. So it already comes with uh, one tool already attached to it. And then you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten additional ones inside of this plastic case. Uh, it's it's really cheap feeling. It's really plasticky. So when you want to take the blade part off, I just squeeze this black button here and then just pull it out. And then when I want to just put it back in, I can just put it down just like that. And the way that this works is, let's say that you've got a, a rough patch on something like this and you just want to scrape it off. So that's what this will be used for. You probably won't see this, but there's a little bit of a sharp edge to this. So I can just take this and just roughly just kind of bring it across and it'll help to get rid of some of those, some of those areas that are just sort of sticking up. So it can be, you know, good to use in a pinch. This is a better example. Yeah. Cause you can, you can definitely hear it. And you can probably see some of the material that's currently falling down on the table. So yeah, that's what a deburring tool is. And uh, this is not electronic or anything, it's manual, but you do get yourself 10, um, 
blade attachments. I don't know what the proper name for it is, but yeah, that is also something that's good to have around because you're always going to have little bits and pieces on 3D prints that don't come out as smooth as you would like for them to. All right, clean off the table a little bit. Let's see what's next in the bag old tricks. Let's grab this. Oh yeah, so these are some copper brushes. So I got two copper wire brushes for $1.99. So basically a dollar for each of these and use these to clean your nozzles because the nozzles are going to get a little bit gunked up with filament, especially if you're using a stickier type of filament like PETG, you can use these to clean it, you know, and it's, you have to clean it when it's hot because that's when it's the easiest and you don't want to be touching them with your fingers and trying to scrape it off with your fingernails. That's what this is for. So what you do, you would just heat up the nozzle, get it nice and hot. And some folks say you should turn the printer off because of these, uh, because this is copper and electronics and all that stuff, but whatever it is that you do when that nozzle is hot you just you know brush it clean it up a bit and these should last a good while and you got two of them don't really suspect that you'll be cleaning the nozzle all that often but when you do you'll be happy that you got yourself some wire brushes or in this case some copper brushes so that you can clean those up nice and good so two of those for $1.99 copper wire brushes that is always helpful and then next up we got some grease. We have got some grease. And for this grease, I paid uh, $1.99 for this grease. Now, if you have the Flash Forge Adventure 5M, it actually comes with grease inside of the box. But I have no idea where I put that grease. But use this grease to lubricate the railing. So in that particular printer, every 200 hours of printing is recommended that you lubricate the guide rails. So their print head goes this way on it. I'm going to put a little bit of it on the rail. I'm probably just going to put one little bit on the left side and a little bit on the right side because, you know, make it even. And then just slide the print head back and forth to get it nice and evenly distributed. And I don't see any reason why you wouldn't use these on the Z-axis screws as well. The instructions don't mention the Z-axis screws, but I mean, a little bit of grease couldn't hurt, right? I hope not. But anyway, a good tube of grease, a little bit will take you a long way so you don't have to gunk it on and you shouldn't not be running out of this really quickly because it only takes a little bit but this is good for maintenance so that everything can just smooth nice and well smooth and then not also help with accuracy as well next up is oh it's a glue stick again $1.99 for this uh, glue stick here so this glue stick is <clears throat> the brand on it is or the company name on, on it is Seabor and it actually has a date on here. I guess it's an expiration date. Um, it's going to be November 15th, 2025. So that's a, that's a good ways off. Easy to clean, strong adhesion. You know, and some people say you don't need to use glue if you got one of those textured PEI uh, build plate sheets. And hey, maybe that's true. But I have had experiences in the past where if I just use some glue, things stuck better. And you know, other people say that glue is supposed to be used as a separation layer and it doesn't actually help things stick, but I beg to differ. Things have stuck better when I use glue. I don't really use glue these days. I just clean the plate with soap and water and that tends to get everything, you know, in order, but it always helps to have some glue. So this is just a regular glue stick. You turn it, the glue goes up. You turn it the other way, the glue goes down. I'm actually a fan of the glue that Flash Forge provides because instead of it being a glue stick, it just has a nice soft pad and the glue is a liquid. And then you just have to press and apply the glue. I kind of like that better than the actual glue stick, but it always, I think it's always helpful to have some glue around just in case you need it. All right, so I think we're coming down to the wire here. I can still feel a few things in here, maybe just a couple of things, but uh, let's just grab this. What is this? Oh, these are calipers, digital calipers, in which I paid $3.60 for this digital caliper. Now, why is this useful? Well, if you're trying to gauge the accuracy of your printer, or the reason why I got this is because I wanted to see whether or not my Neptune 4 was 
over extruding even after I set, um, after I calibrated the flow rate. And the way that I would do that is just measure some filament that's you know coming into the print head and then I would mark it off and then I would tell the printer to extrude a certain amount. And if it extrudes more than that, then I know it's over extruding. If it extrudes less, I know it's under extruding. And if it does it perfectly, I know that is just fine. So that's why I wanted to have this pair of digital calipers. Let's see, does this come with any batteries already installed? I'm gonna hold this down. All right, we got no juice. So it looks like I'm gonna need to put some batteries in here somehow. Is it a battery door? Ouch. Ah, nuts. Uh, it takes one of those really small circle batteries. I was hoping that this would come with one. Uh, but it didn't. I was hoping there would already be a battery installed, but it's not. And now I need to figure out what kind of battery this thing actually takes. Does it say? Uh, I don't know. I do have some of those smaller batteries upstairs somewhere. I'll just see if it fits. But the way that this works, when it is turned on, you just basically slide this over something. So if I wanted to see like how many millimeters this is apart, I would just do like this. If I can get it on there, you know, and then it'll give me a reading, a digital reading. And I think that that can be real useful. Hey, future Jeremy here. And I got batteries and I also have a calibration cube, which I believe is supposed to be 20 millimeters. So let's just test this out and see the accuracy of it. All right, let's close it down. 19.8 millimeters. Let me just flip this, see what reading we get now. 19.9 millimeters. Hey, I think that's pretty darn close. I'm happy with that. So um, I guess this thing, uh, it's pretty accurate. So I think that this is only one more thing left in this bag, it is. And this is a PTFE tube, a spare PTFE tube. So if you use a printer that uses a PTFE tube, I think it's always helpful to have an additional one on hand. And this particular one costs $2.49. So if yours wears out in time, I think it's always good to have another one of these, you know, just kind of sitting around so that you can immediately swap it out instead of having to wait for it. And if you also happen to have like a filament dry box and you want to run a PTFE tube from the dry box to the printer and you got like an attachment so that you can just run the filament through the tubes and never expose it to air, then, you know, it's always good to have one of these on hand. Now, this one doesn't appear to be very long. I'm not sure how long this is exactly, but it's not a very long PTFE tube, but it is a spare one nonetheless. So that is very good to have. So with all these things combined, I don't know what the total is, but it's not a lot of money. And I think that all of these things are going to be very useful when it comes to 3D printing. These are things that you are probably not going to use all the time every single day, but you put these in a bag or a box or somewhere off to the side. When you need them eventually, you will be happy that you have them on hand and that you don't have to go to the store or wait a day or two or more to get them in the mail after you order them. So remember, links to all of these things, make sure there's nothing else in here. Nope, that I got on Timu are gonna be down in the description. And uh, if you've never shopped at Timu before, if you do use that link, you might even get like a coupon or something to make the price even lower. So that's always good. But yeah, I'm gonna store these things away and um, get ready for the next video, which is gonna be coming up pretty soon. So I will see you then. And until then, take care of yourselves and I'll talk to you soon.